Thank you, Adam, and good afternoon to everybody present uh, in today's webinar. My name is Arvin, as Adam introduced me, um, and I am uh, one of the technical person here at EMWorks. Today it will be my pleasure to, uh, to uh, walk you through this webinar, which is titled uh, Introduction to Electromagnetic Simulation Inside SOLIDWORKS. Okay. Just as Adam mentioned before we start, um, at any time during the presentation, if any of you feel like asking us a question, please feel free to use the chat window in your um, uh, GoToMeeting, uh, and you will be able to type in the question um, for us. Okay. Towards the end of this webinar, um, uh, we will be able to answer some or probably all of those questions uh, that you guys enter. Okay. And the second thing is, uh, this webinar will be recorded, so a link to this recording will be made to you, uh, made available to you via email. So feel free to uh, view them uh, later if need be, or share them with uh, your colleagues and other people whom you think might benefit from this webinar. With this uh, brief introduction, let us begin. The agenda for today is to first understand where the electromagnetic simulation fits inside the SOLIDWORKS simulation strategy. Okay. We're going to quickly jump into uh, the key application areas uh, and the industries uh, where this, will, this kind of simulation will actually be helpful. Uh, we're going to look at uh, EMWORKS products and its bundles. And finally, I'm going to uh, show you the product uh, using some uh, very commonly uh, occurring uh, applications in the field of electromagnetic simulation. Now really, where does electromagnetic simulation play in the whole SOLIDWORKS simulation space? As, you, uh, as some of you might be aware, SOLIDWORKS, uh, a very popular 3D CAD package, has its own simulation products. Okay? It starts with uh, the mechanical simulation, which includes structural, structural thermal, and also uh, motion kind of simulation. That's well inside SOLIDWORKS. Okay? We also have CFD, which is uh, flow, uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, flow simulation, uh, which allows you to do coupled uh, um, conjugated heat transfer and fluid flow type of problems. Um, also injection molding and plastic uh, uh, kind of simulation is available uh, inside SOLIDWORKS and really the missing piece is uh, the ability to perform electromagnetic simulation and also coupled electromagnetic um, thermal electromagnetic motion uh, type of simulation and this uh, missing piece is what we will be addressing today and uh, this missing piece is actually filled by two of our products called EMS and HFWORKS okay? Both these products are gold certified and over 500 uh, customers use these products worldwide. Okay. And actually now let's uh, take a look at uh, the product wise applications uh, for our products. Okay. We're going to start from what is there in the left. As you can see, um, EMS caters to a wide variety of applications. Um, and one way of uh, classifying these applications is by really what is the frequency of um, your excitation, basically. Now, EMS, uh, you can have things like uh, DC uh, current, which really has no frequency, um, and then all the way to alternating currents, um, which whose frequency can range from, say, 50, 60 hertz, which is our common electricity supply in most parts of the world, uh, all the way to several hundred megahertz as possible. And then we enter into a realm of a high frequency area where um, a few, few megahertz, a few hundred megahertz, all the way to several gigahertz applications are available as we see them right in front of our eyes almost all days. Okay? A classic example of a very high frequency application is going to be your cell phones. That's so ubiquitous today. Um, the cell phones, they have antennas, they have GPS, they have many, many things um, that uh, makes us, um, you know, uh, gives us the comfort of understanding, talking, uh, finding our coordinates, etc. Uh, and these things uh, fall under the high frequency application. Uh, today's the, um, uh, webinar and focus will however not be in this area. We have uh, several webinars and series that caters to the high frequency application. We're going to shift our focus to the left side of our uh, screen here and it's going to be mainly in the low frequency application. Now in the low frequency application there are several, several electrical 
um, apparatus, more units, etc., that operate in these frequencies. You know, some things that might be very familiar with uh, most of you uh, are electric motors, uh, generators, electric machines like transformers, inductors. Then you have permanent magnets, you have coils, you have bus bars, inductors, and so on. So there are actually a whole variety and a spectrum of applications that actually fall under a lot of key industries um, such as automotive, you can think of uh, electric cars, electric motors uh, play a role in automotive. You can think of electrically driven clutches and brakes, etc., even appearing in the field of automotive, um, aerospace defense transportation. Um, then comes to consumer goods, um, you have these magnets, uh, say magnet arrays that helps you to open close uh, electronic devices, like uh, think of it like your iPad cover that is made of several uh, magnet arrays and that helps you to open and close uh, these things. Uh, then you have sensors, uh, uh, mainly operating on the principles of electromagnetics that help you um, identify um, any kind of a situation and allows you to uh, give some kind of feedback um, through uh, what it's sensing. So sensors now play a very major role in today's Internet of Things and all the other app um, plethora of applications that uh, that's that we see around today. Okay, uh, then we come to some traditional electrical engineering concepts. Now, I mean that is really power generation. We talk about generators. Now we talk about uh, high uh, voltage uh, power lines that help you to transmit power from one area to the other. Um, we're talking about insulators. We're talking about bus bars that help carry. Uh, these are large chunks of copper. Um, uh, tubes that help to carry the current and so on. So uh, these things can actually be even studied uh, using EMS. And finally, uh, uh, another area that is becoming uh, very important is the ability to predict electromagnetic behavior, electromagnetic shielding. Okay, um, Because there are some uh, constraints and uh, um, regulations uh, posted on some of the products, uh, it's very important to understand how effectively your uh, products are shielded and, and, um, and these could be in the area of biomedical, in life sciences, uh, electronics, etc. So as you can see here, um, it covers a wide range of applications and also across diverse industries, pretty much every industry that one can think of today uses some type of low frequency electromagnetics. And as I mentioned earlier, we have over 400 customers, 500 at the moment as we speak, and here is just a the small display of some of the companies that use our uh, products today. Okay, You can see that there are big companies as well as small ones, uh, in, and this is a big good mixture of people who use our products today. It's quite trusted, it's been around for a long time. Now, uh, with that, let's let's go to some a few niche applications related to electromagnetics, and then let me walk you through how um, EMS actually helps um, helps us uh, do these kind of applications. Now, um, one of the I would say the most commonly occurring um, application where our product EMS for SolidWorks features in is uh, is in the field of electric motors. No? Now there are many things that are possible uh, using a, a simulation package with respect to electric motors. One can compute the performance of motors like torque, etc. Um, you can also uh, get an idea of windings, current, uh, what kind of windings you want to use, how you want to um, have the conductors in your uh, motors and so on. Uh, basically the objective is to understand the losses in the motor, uh, to understand how it operates, uh, the torque characteristics and um, meaningfully which could lead to any kind of design changes which uh, helps you to reduce the weight of the motor and uh, reduce the cost of the motor and so on. Okay. Um, now uh, electric motors have wide range of applications, you know vehicles is just one of them, you can think of power tools, you can, I mean pretty much a lot of uh, ceiling fans, uh, HVAC, all of these industries employ electric motors. Okay? It's a really a billion dollar type of industry. Um, also another uh, area where uh, EMS could help in the electric motors field is to understand how hot your motors get. So we have a coupled uh, EM thermal simulation that helps you to uh, gauge the temperature in your motors and so on. 
Now, uh, in continuing with uh, the theory of uh, actuators, I mean motors being a rotary actuator, one can actually even do uh, linear actuators or uh, solenoids uh, can be simulated uh, using EMS. Okay? Uh, EMS can help uh, to design the coil that you use to excite, uh, close or open the solenoids. So say if you case, uh, consider like a solenoid valve type of application. Uh, and also it can do a coupled EM and a motion simulation for you to understand the response of the solenoid. Okay? Solenoid again uh, features itself in, in a variety of application, machine design, uh, weapons uh, delivery, uh, the valve industry, uh, many consumer products. Uh, they make like washing machines and things like that. They make use of uh, numerous amounts of solenoids. So wherever automation uh, is required, wherever some kind of valving uh, technology is required, um, solenoids play a very vital role in that particular uh, area. Okay. Next we will uh, talk about the power industry. Okay. EMS helps, uh, again, as I mentioned here, a lot of electrical machines, the traditional electrical machines from uh, generators, uh, transformers, etc., can actually be analyzed using and, and simulated using EM simulation. Okay? Um, in the power industry, some of the things that uh, uh, our customers use uh, EM products for uh, is uh, to predict some kind of breakdown, corona breakdowns in their insulators, how effective is their insulator design. They can use this product to calculate the losses occurring in a transformer and also the temperature distribution uh, inside their inductors and so on. Okay. Now why does uh, electromagnetic simulation play a very vital role in the power industry is basically because the cost of testing some of these prototypes and equipments is extremely prohibitive and as a result the virtual testing uh, kind of platform in a computer uh, makes things a lot more easier for engineers to be able to uh, build these uh, de devices in SOLIDWORKS easily and uh, test them immediately for their effectiveness using a product like EM simulation. Next we come across uh, a more modern type of applications is the ability uh, to use a wide variety of magnets that are available uh, in today's world uh, to create very interesting products. Okay? Um, now um, when you make an arrangement of magnets that's typically called what is called as a magnet array. Okay? Now magnet arrays have uh, properties that are very different from uh, each of those single magnets that constitute the array. Okay. And uh, in, in spacing and keeping these magnets uh, together in a proper uh, fashion, one can create uh, very interesting looking fields which can do a lot of interesting things. Okay. Um, so magnet arrays is really becoming a very hot topic nowadays um, and uh, one can compute uh, the kind of field that a magnet array can produce uh, using EMS. Uh, one can also compute forces due to this field on uh, ferromagnetic substances and so on. Okay? Um, there are again a lot of uh, applications, um, you know, uh, some of them feature in the um, consumer uh, space. Uh, you have magnetic pens, you have, to, you have magnetic uh, hangers and so on. So uh, it, this is a, a case where uh, you can make very innovative and revolutionary products uh, using magnet arrays. And uh, EMS helps you to understand how effective your products actually are once you put them together. Another class of industry that again uh, uh, you know, uh, converges between some kind of a mechanical and an electrical space is, is the, um, or acoustics and electrical is the ability to uh, create uh, loudspeakers. Um, here, uh, EMS helps you to understand the forces acting on your voice coil. It helps you to understand what kind of vibrations you can expect and you can visualize the complex magnetic field that exists um, due to the operation of loudspeakers. Uh, in power electronics, um, you could, uh, uh, you know, simulate many things like uh, capacitors, uh, tra trans, um, uh, uh, trans, I mean, um, uh, inductors and so on, um, where uh, one can uh, uh, calculate the circuit uh, parameters. So, for example, if you have an inductor that you see here in the bottom uh, image here. Um, how do you know the inductance of these inductors? Now these inductors go into a large uh, circuit. 
okay and they form a very small part of a circuit but uh, they play a vital role and it's very important to understand what are the circuit parameters or the characteristics that make up these uh, geometry okay and ems helps you to understand these things for example you can compute the capacitance of a capacitor the inductance of an inductor if you have a series of inductors you can compute the um, um, the self inductance as well as the mutual inductance so when you actually put them in a circuit you have these parameters and you can do a circuit type of simulation using a different product now uh, i'll just devote two slides to the high frequency side okay you can uh, design antennas with uh, uh, em uh, product called higher h of works okay um, and uh, then uh, one can also be able to simulate a plethora of RF and microwave components uh, like waveguides, uh, filters, couplers, and so on. Okay, um, really the topic is not uh, these uh, for today, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, if you need more uh, information about these things, feel free to contact us, and we will direct you to more webinars um, or past materials uh, that cover uh, these topics. Okay, uh, with this, uh, I would like to um, just uh, shift. The, the pace of this webinar a little bit and introduce you to our products uh, EMS for SOLIDWORKS and I'm go we're going to look at the four different applications okay uh, we're going to obviously uh, as we mentioned earlier there are a plethora of applications it's almost impossible to do justice to all of them in a very short webinar like this which covers uh, so we are trying to um, put together today um, four different applications that uh, that uh, our product can cater to us. The first application that we will see is a Halbach array, and that's a magnet array, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, and the array, the magnetic fields in each of these uh, blocks are different, and the magnet direction is different. So when you put them together as a single unit, we will see how it behaves and what kind of forces it's going to uh, create on the um, uh, any kind of uh, ferromagnetic substance that you keep at a particular distance from this array. We're going to look at an example of a solenoid that uh, is basically a coupled motion and electromagnetic type of simulation. We're going to look at a static electrical machine like a three-phase transformer. What can EMS do in that? And finally, um, a very popular electrical uh, motor type of application uh, to see how EMS um, uh, place in that kind of application. With this and without further ado, let me quickly um, direct my screen uh, to uh, the Holbach array. As you can see uh, in the screen, now this is a Holbach array. Uh, it's a magnet array made up of uh, cubical magnets uh, and there are five of them. And uh, the magnet direction, the north and south is, are indicated uh, by um, these arrows as you see here. The tip of the arrow uh, is north and the tail is the south and you can see the alignment of north and south in this Halbach array. Okay. Now you build the geometry inside SOLIDWORKS and that's uh, um, uh, pretty straightforward to do. I presume most of you um, have uh, some working knowledge uh, in CAD especially in SOLIDWORKS and once you build the geometry inside SOLIDWORKS it's very easy to do the simulation as EMS is a gold certified add-in product to SOLIDWORKS. When you go to the EMS tab, you can actually create simulations as I've created here. And several different types of simulations can actually be created using EMS. Okay? And uh, they are organized as what we call as studies. So to walk you through, um, there are six different types of studies. The magnetic studies are magnetostatic, transient magnetic, and AC magnetic. If you have DC currents um, and just permanent magnets uh, or DC currents or permanent magnets, you would use what is known as magnetostatic. Okay? If you have AC currents, then you would use AC magnetic. And if you have any other type of uh, excitation, which is neither DC nor AC, say, think of it as a pulse or any kind of excitation that varies as a, uh, as a function of time, uh, you can use transient magnetic. Okay. There are also a lot of other uh, features in the product. Um, the most important one is the coupling simulation. One can couple the EMS simulation to a motion simulation, uh, to a thermal simulation, and also to a structural type of simulation. And uh, we can do many things like parameterization, where which can help you to uh, parameterize any SOLIDWORKS geometry and, and see how the results vary if you vary that particular parameter. Okay. 
Um, so, um, for a magnet array type of simulation, one creates what is known as a magnetostatic study. Once you create a study, then the next uh, step is to go ahead and look at um, the uh, materials that you assign to each of these components. Okay? And these materials can be assigned very easily by uh, accessing our material database, which is fully customizable. Now, EMS uh, ships with a uh, material database that is uh, rich in a lot of uh, commonly used materials as you see here under several categories and it's completely customizable and you can create what I mean by that is you can create your own materials and use that for simulation. Now here uh, you have permanent magnets, we have some neodymium based uh, permanent magnets and so on. So um, permanent magnets which are by far the most important thing in, in this particular uh, demonstration is concerned uh, can actually be assigned. So here each of the cubes are made up of a neodymium based permanent magnets N55 um, and uh, the direction of uh, uh, the north south direction is indicated by the arrows as you see here. Okay. Uh, now you also have um, a steel which is uh, just a steel 1010 block that is uh, situated at a particular distance from the top of these magnet arrays and the objective is to understand what is the distribution of uh, the field and what is also the force acting on this particular block. Okay? Now, um, uh, we have already solved this problem, so we're just going to uh, revert to some of the post-processing features in the product for us to visualize. So the first thing is, uh, let's go ahead and visualize uh, the magnetic flux density uh, in Teslas. Uh, so EMS has the ability to uh, plot these uh, values, um, you know, uh, not just in the magnet and the steel part, but also in the air around it. So, let if I go ahead and show the air component, uh, one can compute the magnetic flux density and one can visualize them inside EMS. So, as you can see here, uh, you can see how the magnetic uh, uh, flux uh, values change. Um, in this particular model, in and around this uh, particular. And you can see some of the steel part being magnetized. Okay? Uh, and the most important thing now is what kind of forces is this magnet array going to attract on the steel. Okay? Now you, and that can be immediately got through what is known as a result table inside EMS. Now the forces, uh, predominant direction of the force is along the y direction as you see here and there is a, uh, there is a force of attraction uh, which is kind of obvious uh, a steel gets attracted to the magnet so there is a minus value here which denotes the, um, that the force is an attracting force about uh, two and a half uh, Newton force uh, is with uh, the force with which this magnet array attracts the magnet. So, uh, one can do both quantitative as well as qual qualitative uh, viewing of uh, the results uh, in EMS. Uh, so, uh, I do want to note here that uh, I'm not going to go over every uh, nitty-gritty feature in the uh, in the product. Um, so, uh, and it's it's really hard uh, to do justice to them. So, we're going to show some salient features in each of these applications. Now, with this, let me move to the next uh, kind of application. Um, which is um, let's say which is a solenoid. Okay, so we're going to now take a look at a solenoid. This is a cross-sectional view of a solenoid. Okay, uh, you see a plunger that is uh, here. That's the movable part. Um, there are also stationary parts. Pretty much everything else is stationary. And you see here, uh, this is a coil. Uh, which is excited and as the coil is excited, there's a force acting on the plunger. The objective of doing this EM simulation is to understand uh, what kind of forces act uh, when I excite my uh, coil and how does this force, uh, how does the plunger respond to this force. I mean, obviously it's going to close, uh, but how fast does it close, how long does it uh, take for it to traverse this distance and so on. So, uh, this is a case where you do a coupled motion EM simulation. Okay? Um, uh, we create a study just like before, uh, except for uh, we, um, in, we couple this to uh, what we know as a motion coupling. Now, when, uh, the way we do uh, motion coupling in EMS uh, is uh, through uh, SOLIDWORKS motion. Okay? Uh, so, SOLIDWORKS motion is a kinematic and dynamic uh, simulation package that is uh, included with every SOLIDWORKS premium license or uh, simulation professional license. Um, so, if you have access to SOLIDWORKS motion, uh, you can do a coupled motion EM simulation uh, 
uh, using uh, EMS. Okay. Um, here the idea is to drive the sol solenoid, um, the the plunger, uh, with the electromagnetic forces. Okay. So for that we just set up uh, a motion simulation inside SolidWorks. Now when you do a motion simulation inside SolidWorks, uh, here all we need to do is to tell the product uh, that there's some kind of electromagnetic force that's going to come from EMS and that's going to drive this plunger. Okay? Now this is just a place value force. Let me go ahead and edit that for you. You can see that the value is zero newtons. This kind of gives an indication to SolidWorks motion that the, some other kind of external uh, force might drive this particular uh, uh, plunger. Okay. So uh, now, uh, just like before, we after creating the simulation, we assign materials to each of the components. Uh, and uh, one thing that we didn't do earlier, but we were, we're going to do that in this particular simulation, is the um, is defining uh, what is known as a uh, coil. So you can uh, select the components that comprise the coil. You can select the phase through which. Uh, um, the current comes in and also you can do some general properties for coil definition, uh, enter the number of turns, ampere turns basically, the current and so on. Okay. Once you define the coil, um, we are ready to do the simulation and also um, we request the EMS program to compute the force acting on this mobile part or the plunger. Okay. Now with this, uh, we can go take a look at some of the results. For example, um, the quantitative part of it, the force value. So if you are interested in computing the force, the force is predominantly in the y direction. You can look at how the force varies as a function of time. You can see how the force uh, um, helps it to close and it as the solenoid closes, the force uh, increases uh, pretty much exponentially. Okay? Now, um, in addition to the force, there are many, many things that are possible. For example, one can look at how the center of mass uh, gets displaced as a function of time uh, due to this uh, um, the motion of the solenoid. You can look at the velocity, you can look at the acceleration, one can look at the back EMF generated and uh, how the back EMF varies as the solenoid valve closes. Um, one can also look at other electrical uh, parameters like the inductance of the coil, the flux linkage and so on. Okay? These are some of the quantitative results that EMS can give you. Now when we get to the qualitative results, uh, you can look at, just like before, you can look at the magnetic flux density. Uh, here is the uh, plot of a magnetic flux density uh, distributed inside uh, the solenoid. Okay? I can go ahead and animate this um, and uh, here you can clearly see how the solenoid uh, closes uh, due to the excitation of the coil. And uh, while the animation is being played, you can also see how the magnetic flux density varies um, uh, in the different components and so on. Okay? So you can do uh, like a section plot uh, as you see here. That's one type of plot. We also have what is known as a vector plot. So you can also do the same thing, visualize any of these uh, flux and uh, flux density uh, etc. Because these are vector quantities, you can even visualize them as vectors. Okay? Um, now, uh, there's another feature inside EMS that, uh, that is worth mentioning is the ability to create automatic reports. Okay? So here, uh, EMS, uh, as we do the simulation, uh, EMS actually creates uh, your automatic uh, word report here. Uh, which uh, keeps tracks of all the simulation parameters that uh, that you did. It has all the results and also um, it, it includes some of the plots that you created. So it's really neat. Uh, it's completely customizable and uh, you can uh, uh, view that right inside SolidWorks and also uh, it, it can be edited um, simply uh, from inside SOLIDWORKS. So this is a great companion uh, uh, to document some of your simulations and your designs right inside uh, EMS. Okay? Uh, with this, uh, let me go to the next uh, type of application. Uh, 
this could be the last one. So let's uh, look at um, a, a, gener a generator. I'm sorry, a transformer. Now this is a, a typical three-phase uh, transformer. You have a core, um, and then you have the primary and the secondary uh, coils. Uh, basically, the uh, coils which are excited, and then the uh, secondary coils where uh, uh, currents are induced and uh, the transformer could be a step up or a step down transformer based on the number of turns okay so just like before you create a study but the difference is this because this is ac currents we created what is known as a uh, ac simulation uh, study here um, so you define materials for example these coils are made of copper um, the core is made of steel um, and then um, and that's about it uh, and the objective is to compute uh, the induced currents, uh, the eddy effects in the core, um, and also uh, look at the flux uh, and so on. Okay. Now uh, these are uh, the coils. Now these are primary and secondary coils. Let's just go over uh, one of them to look at the definition. Just like before, one can compute, um, uh, one can actually define a coil inside EMS by just selecting the components that comprise the coil. Okay. Select the phase through which a uh, current comes in and then uh, you can specify the uh, ampere turns. Uh, it's an AC current, so just uh, we need to know what is the RMS value of this particular um, uh, excitation. So you have the three um, primary coils that are excited, and then you also have three secondary coils. Um, only a portion of it is shown here just to see the cross-section. Um, so um, as before, one can look at the results. The result table includes a lot of uh, things. For example, we have about six coils, and hence the inductance uh, becomes very interesting and important. So you have the self-inductance of each of these coils as well as the mutual inductance. Uh, these are also computed by the product. Okay? We can look at the flux linkages uh, in the coil. You can look at the coupling coefficient matrix. Um, you can look at the induced voltage. And finally, the solid loss in the trans in the core, which is very important, uh, can can be uh, computed right inside EMS. Okay. Now uh, the cores are often laminated, and the material properties inside EMS allows you to apply laminations to your geometry and so on. So uh, with this, uh, we can just uh, take a look at some of the uh, plots. For example, um, we'll we'll take a look at. Uh, the current density, uh, we can look at the current density plot uh, here. Now this is the induced currents um, inside uh, the model. Okay. And as before, uh, a report is uh, automatically generated for you uh, and so on. Now uh, I just want to uh, bring uh, the topic of meshing because this is a, uh, so this is a uh, um, finite element method that is based on meshing. Uh, so uh, EMS have, uh, has an automatic mesh generation process um, that allows you to create a finite element mesh for simulation. Uh, as you see here, uh, there is automatically uh, created, the optimal mesh is automatically created for you. But nevertheless, we also have uh, mesh controls, the ability for you to uh, create uh, different mesh sizes and different components, you can create uh, using what is known as mesh controls. You can apply mesh controls on components, on faces, etc., uh, and you will be able to create, um, have some say on how your mesh is going to be. So it's a finite element type of simulation. So uh, a mesh uh, type, uh, a meshing is one of uh, uh, the process in EMS. So uh, let me close this and then uh, go to the last uh, model that's of interest today. Uh, this is um, a motor, as you see here. Uh, this is a brushless motor, and um, uh, there is the rotors uh, in the middle, and there are permanent magnets stuck on the outer uh, of the rotors, okay? And uh, about six of them. And then there is the stator, and these are the windings um, you see here. Uh, as before, we create uh, a study. This time it's a transient study because by nature these uh, uh, rotary actuators are uh, transient in nature, so they, uh, the flux varies as a, um, as a function of time, and it's also a three-phase motor, so even the excitation varies as a function of time. Okay? So we create a, um, a transient study, and we've coupled that um, to uh, a motion uh, motion simulation. 
So we've included uh, the materials here. Um, these magnets are made of N52. Uh, the steel uh, is made of uh, steel 1010, um, the, both the stator and the rotor. Um, and you can have laminations and things like that um, in the motor. Now we have three windings in the motor. Obviously we have many coils. Now these six of them, these, uh, each of these uh, six, they are uh, part of one single winding. So um, if I just uh, quickly go over to the coil definition and I can show a preview here. Now pretty much you can see how the uh, currents uh, are going through each of these coils. Now they form, uh, it's all connected in series, so the same current goes through these coils in the direction shown here. Um, and these forms one uh, one winding. Okay, um, you can enter the number of uh, conductors that pass through this cross section, and also uh, the sinusoidal um, the source. It's it's actually an AC um, motor, so uh, a sinusoidal current with uh, with uh, a peak value of 10 amps is actually um, flowing through them. Okay, similarly, uh, you can look at the next coil, the next set of coils. Uh, the next set of coils are uh, have the, everything else is the same. The only difference is the uh, phase shift in the current. You see here it's uh, 120 degrees shifted um, from the previous one, and that's really what happens when you excite a three-phase type of motor. Okay? So we have uh, three sets of windings that are actually defined here, and uh, finally it is important to find out what is the torque acting on the rotor. As before, uh, you can uh, take a view at the qualitative as well as the quantitative part of the results. Um, let's take a look uh, at the magnetic flux density. This is the section view of the magnetic flux density. Um, and this is really useful because you can take a, uh, you can actually identify areas in your stator, in your rotor, uh, where uh, the steel gets saturated. So you can see these red areas are where the high magnetic flux is and uh, the uh, blue areas obviously is uh, low magnetic flux values. So um, this is interesting because you can get an understanding of a pattern of the magnetic flux um, and you can uh, animate this and see how uh, it varies as the motor spins. Okay? Um, in addition to the flux density, one can compute the current density. The, these are induced currents, the current density um, yeah, in the windings as well as in the core uh, can actually be computed. Um, and um, as before, uh, you can have reports, but I think the most important thing uh, in the motor is uh, is the ability to compute uh, things like torque. Now, torque acting about the z-axis is, is the major torque, and as you can see here, um, the product kind of gives you the sinusoidal torque um, after, I mean, the startup, the starting is a little, this one, well, as soon as it starts and once it stabilizes, you actually see how the torque characteristics vary as a function of time uh, in your motor. So uh, this motor generates somewhere between 8 and 9 um, uh, Newton meter of torque uh, as it rotates. Okay. Um, and uh, you can compute the winding losses, uh, you can compute uh, the angular velocity and so on. Um, so all of these things are possible and available uh, under um, EMS. Okay. Um, now um, you know, considering the time that we have today, um, I know that I haven't really done justice to each of these particular uh, simulation that we saw. Now we saw four of them, uh, but uh, I think that gives you a good flavor of what is possible inside EMS. Again, um, feel free to type in your questions. We'll try and answer them towards the end of the session. Um, or if you want uh, any further information, uh, feel free to contact us. So um, before I jump into the questions, I have some uh, closing slides. Again, uh, these are some of the key industries and applications that we fit in. Okay, So they're kind of organized uh, uh, in a manner that uh, that's useful for you. So if you are in one of these industries, um, you could benefit by EM simulation. Uh, please feel free to contact us and we'll see if there is a fit um, between our products and your needs. Okay. Uh, finally, um, I would just uh, like to thank you all um, and uh, um, and for any of the inquiries, uh, you may contact our sales manager who introduced us this uh, afternoon. His name is Adam. Uh, these are his coordinates, uh, adam at emworks.com and his phone number. Uh, uh, our, uh, 
our uh, website uh, is uh, where you can find uh, to, uh, you know plethora of information about our products our company our applications and so on so please feel free to visit them um, especially the white paper section and the YouTube video section um, we have demonstrations of uh, pretty much uh, uh, most applications um, uh, in as YouTube videos that helps you to understand what is possible okay and finally your needs uh, may not be addressed by uh, our website or the videos um, and if you need more information uh, you must contact us uh, feel free to give us a call um, you can do that for free trial request of our product uh, you can do that for uh, cus for requesting a customized product demonstration and finally if you want to talk to any of our uh, engineers here uh, to see how um, we could help you with uh, your uh, um, your designs or your design pain points uh, feel free to uh, give us a call okay uh, with that um, I want to just uh, finally um, just walk you through some of the um, product and the product bundles because we saw many things in the demonstration I just want to put that in perspective the EMS product comes in two different flavors one is the EMS professional other is the EMS premium the EMS professional has six different solvers that you saw in the study type um, and then these are electric modules electrostatic conduction and AC electric and the magnetic modules magnetostatic AC and transient magnetic Okay. You can couple this to a thermal simulation or a motion uh, simulation and EMS premium pretty much gives access to all of that what you see in the left hand side plus uh, parameterization which is really a powerful uh, automating feature where you can select any SOLIDWORKS geometry and you can see how your uh, performance varies as you vary that geometry. Okay. And uh, in the right side is our uh, high frequency bundle. Uh, we have uh, seminars dedicated to that uh, whereas there's just one product which is called HFWorks and you can couple that to thermal simulation as well. Okay? Uh, with this uh, let me just uh, quickly jump uh, to some of the questions that you may have and uh, we will... Um, thank you, uh, thank you Arvind for that. This is Adam. Um, I don't know if you saw the first question or not. Um, is uh, The first question is this combination suited to FEA on actual flux motor design? Mm -hmm. The gentleman also attached the link uh, for hybrid actual flux machines. So, uh, do, do you have okay. that on your side or not? Uh, yes, I do. Um, yeah, the EMS is actually a multi-purpose uh, electromagnetic simulation tool. It's not uh, specifically the, uh, for motors, but you can obviously use that tool uh, to design and understand how your motor behaves. So, yes, we can do uh, axial flux motors. There is really no limitation on the type of motors we uh, we will be able to handle we do we actually handle all of them so the idea is for you to be able to model these motors or at least basically the basic structure of it the stator and the rotors and all the windings at least uh, the cross section area of the windings um, has to be done using solidworks and once you do that you will be able to uh, simulate any kind of motors including axial flux uh, motors okay. There's another question which is related to thermal simulation. Um, how does uh, uh, EMS does a couple uh, thermal simulation? So I want to uh, take your attention back uh, uh, to this slide. So as you see here in the transformer example, there are some induced currents or eddy currents in the core um, and that's the nature of transformers when you have AC current. Um, so uh, these eddy currents are, are kind of, uh, um, I would say, um, uh, an evil thing but uh, it's unavoidable okay uh, so these eddy currents actually contribute towards heating and uh, and that is this raises the temperature of the transformer this reduces its performance and so on okay so um, now if you want to understand what are the temperature distributions inside the core you can actually couple the electromagnetic to a thermal simulation and you will be able to compute uh, the temperature distribution inside your model uh, due to electromagnetic forces and due to electromagnetic uh, phenomena. Okay, uh, I guess uh, um, with this we come to an end of this uh, particular uh, webinar. Um, on behalf of EM, uh, EMWorks, uh, Adam and I, we thank you all for uh, taking your valuable time this afternoon to join us in this webinar. I hope this webinar was informative, um, but uh, really uh, should you have any any other questions 
related uh, to any of the uh, to topics we address today or any of your application feel free to contact us or at least uh, visit our um, uh, website uh, you will get uh, good information uh, regarding your application so with this uh, we thank you all you know have a good afternoon and uh, have a great uh, rest of the week and uh, we hope to uh, talk to you uh, on a further date or um, uh, we hope you can try out our products and uh, become one of our valuable customers okay with that uh, we end uh, today's webinar uh, thank you very much